The Far Quest The Chronicles of Kyursun Book 1 By R. Jason Lynch Copyright 2016 and 2023 All Rights Reserved Chapter 12 Tale Telling The bard tilted his hat back and rubbed his forehead while trying to think of just how he should start the tale. But with a gurgling growl from his host, he quickly stammered out his first sentence. Uh, let's see. There was a small kingdom in the east called, um, Trawler's Keep, and it was built upon the edge of the sea. It started as a peaceful little fishing village, but over time it slowly grew into a small independent realm. Now, across a narrow bay, there was an island they called the Isle of Woe. Curasoon's greatest virtue was this. When he began to tell a story, all else seemed to vanish away so that he knew nothing but the tale as it unfolded within his mind. For this reason, as he began his narration, all his anxiety fell away like heavy chains, and he was at peace within the world of his story. The bard continued, It was on the Isle of Woe that many common men buried their dead, and for this reason the island was a mix of old trees, grassy lawns, and gravestones. There were grand mausoleums belonging to legendary kings, buried long ago, and simple unmarked graves belonging to unknown paupers, newly laid to rest. It was a sad but peaceful place where people came to leave flowers at the tombs of their loved ones, and weep quietly. That is, until the troll came. Ah, Baleful rumbled thoughtfully. Twas the gloom and sorrow that brought him. They's drawn to death and darkness like moths to a flame. Kira soon went on without comment, though the statement rang true in his mind. Now it happened that the brutal giant went about making rack and ruin of the land so that no one in the small kingdom had peace. If they held a feast or a wedding, the sound of their merry-making would enrage the troll, and he would attack and massacre them. If they tried to visit the tombs of their dead or bury a departed loved one, the giant would fly into a rage and kill the mourners. Even the sound of their livestock, their labor, and their bartering caused them to suffer his terrible wrath so that they began to go hungry from lack of crops and trade. Moreover, when the troll attacked, he bit great chunks out of his victims so that he ate from both man and beast as he raged. Because of these cruel habits, the people of that kingdom were in despair and so they begged that the king would do something about the troll. In an answer to their petitions, the king of Trawler's Keep chose certain men of strength and valour to dispatch the giant, so that the kingdom might once more prosper and be at peace. Baleful growled a sinister chuckle and rubbed her massive hands together greedily, as if she knew what would come next. The sound of her thickly calloused hands stroking one another was much like the grinding of stones. The bard grimaced at the noise and then went on with his tale. Thirty brave men were ferried across to the Isle of Woe that day, and they each bore a long spear. After they had searched almost the whole island, they finally found the troll in a deep slumber amid a large area of destruction. Ha! He tired himself out with all his raging, the giantess added with a sneer. Cure soon raised his eyebrows and nodded with a look that expressed new realization, but after that, he went on without any further response. First, they carefully bound the sleeping troll in strong iron chains, and then they surrounded the huge man with the intention of piercing him with their spears. However, when they jabbed him with their sharpened iron points, they only buried into the troll's hard calloused flesh. It's the sun that did it. Baleful remarked while feeling her own wart-covered face. Kyrsoon paused. What do you mean? The giantess gazed at the bard with a surprisingly thoughtful look. Ours manfolk are all wrath with no cunning. They's go about breaking and crushing till all they strength's gone. Then they's fall down and sleep. And if day comes and they's happen to be out in the sun, it'll cook em. And if this happens more than a few times, they skin'll be just like old bogras, all thick, wary, and stone-like. 
Kira soon eyed the enormous old woman. Though it was hard to see in the dim light produced by the red flame torch, he was almost sure she began to look sad. Is that what happened to you? He asked before he realized what he was saying. Baleful glowered at the bard. We's trollops don't rage about like dumb brutes and then falls over in the sunlight. We's does our payback with much more style. She blinked her huge black eyes prettily, but the view was more frightening than beautiful. With foolish curiosity, Kura soon pressed for an answer. Then how did the sun burn you? Baleful's expression became distant. It was as if she was looking far into the past. I couldn't have been more than fourteen when I runs away from me's mum and comes to this land, the giantess recalled. Oh, I was a pretty thing at that age. I stills had my smooth skin, and my tusks ain't even comes in yet. I's not much taller than yes, and so, with a stolen cloak and with its hood pulled tight, I's mingled in pretty good with yes folk. For a while I's begged for food when I's got hungry, that is, till I's figures out something else they's willing to swap for. Sometimes they even gives me some of these pre little coins. What did you find to trade? Cure soon asked with a puzzled look. There was only a handful of teeth left in Baleful's mouth, but with just these she still managed to flash an impish grin. I didn't find nothing. She lowered her voice to a harsh whisper. I's at it with me all along. With a chuckle she returned to her normal voice. One of my best customers was this fat old bard, always talking about the king of heaven just like yous. But after a while, he finds me out and he's none too happy when he figures out he's been bedding a trollop. Suddenly realizing what she had been trading, Cure Soon's bearded face flushed with embarrassment. Baleful chuckled at him and then went on. He runs to his pray little lord and tells him what I was. Then the lord has Bogra brought before him, and they strip the cloak from me so's the little lord can ogle at young Bogra. Me standing there as naked as the day I's born. And he says, Oh, she's baleful to look upon, and me's being the priest little she troll yous ever did see. After that, they's name me Baleful. Then the Lord has young Bogra thrown into his dungeon. I think he didn't want me telling nobody that his fat old bard had been rolling round on the straw with a trollop, but I couldn't have told nobody cause eyes didn't speak no common. They don't warn these oars to talk none. Oh, but eyes grunted good enough for him. No long after eyes locked away, eyes pops out a little boy. Looking at him, it's clear he's half common, and when the Lord hears of it, he has his guards rip him out of my arms. Eyes so angry that eyes tried fighting those big men, but in those days, eyes too small. In the end, I've never seen that little boy never no more. As he listened, Kyrsoon's blue eyes turned glassy, and he quietly cleared his voice while looking away. Baleful did not seem to notice, but went on with her story. After that, I just sat there in the Lord's dungeon, and their eyes listens, and their eyes plots. That's how I learns to speak common. I sits by the dung hole and listens to the lady of the castle teaching her childrens how to read, sounding out every word for em and telling em what they's means. And over the years, eyes gets bigger, and when they see now big eyes gettin, they marvels. Then the Lord brings me out to do work, the heavy things that needs doin. Also, they's parade me out during these feasts and chain me to a post in the courtyard so these guests could ogle at a real trollop. And they's let the sun burn me awful, and all I's could do is curl up in a ball.
That's how I's guts all burned. But in the end, I's paid them all for it. As she said these last words, her voice turned into a sinister growl.